All right, so on our road trip, we got to see some pretty sweet uh, venues. We spent a lot of time with guilds, but we also had some epic woodworking adventures, or epic adventures we call them. We went to uh, a few museums, but most affecting really to me was seeing the Wharton Eschrick Museum. Wharton Eschrick, considered by his peers to be the dean of American craftsmen. He started out as an artist, then he was a sculptor in wood and, and then furniture, a lot in furniture as well, sculptural furniture. And that's what we wanna get at tonight is the whole idea of sculptural wood joints. And I wanna show you in particular a sculptural kind of mortise and tenon uh, that's used in a lot of places. In fact, let me show you where some of these places are. This is a Queen Anne chair, very sculptural from the 18th century, more so than Chippendale, but these flowing curvy lines, they, they give you some opportunity for some interesting joinery. And there's actually a mortise and tenon joint right at that point. And check it out, I've got the actual arm in rough form for this very chair. And this is what it looks like. So if I bring this down, look at, we've got a seam right there, a kind of a diagonal. And before I join that, I have a square tenon in there. Believe it or not, it's floating. And I forget how I chopped that from both directions, if I use a hollow chisel mortise or, or what. But believe me, there's a nice tenon in there. And this gets rounded to about a one inch uh, diameter. So very sculptural when it's done. And you can scarcely even see the joint, uh, especially as it gets darker like that. But that's not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you more contemporary people like Sam Maloof. This chair, for instance, he, he came after, a little after Wharton Eschrick, but I'm sure he knew of him and was influenced by him because he's got some very sculptural mortise and tenons uh, right in this location here. There's a tenon going into this arm. And then also in the back, he's got various ones and a very tricky joint with the seat that we won't go into tonight, but it's a nice study if you like Sam Maloof. But here we are. This is a great low back Sam Maloof chair. So, so signature of him with his sculptural uh, sweeping curves and that joinery. Look at that joint. Of course, his main thing is the rocker. If you haven't seen it, give yourself a treat and do a search on Sam Maloof rocking chair. Mm, anyway, so here we go. This leg comes up and it tenons into this arm. And look how sculptural it is around there. Of course, it's a floating tenon. It's actually just a little dowel that he used. It surprises you, you know, when you see this kind of furniture. But here, look, I put my hand on there for context. Um, it's a little darkened from people touching it, I think. He did this demonstration for the Greenville Woodworkers Guild in 1984. Wow. And so the chair is sitting there, and it was such a treat to see it. And number of pieces underneath. Uh, and this is an up, upper uh, back where the, the splat or backrest meets the side leg. And then you see the arm beginning to swoop down from here. But check that out. There's another mortise and tenon joint right there with a beautiful sculptural corner. And then we have the work of Wharton Eschrick, the Dean of American Craftsmen. And check this out. This is... This is such a simple little stool. And when we took the tour the other day, I didn't even mention the camera lady, but this caught my eye in the corner. And we looked at so many other great pieces, but this is just the essence of simplicity, but also making the simple sculptural. So you've got a simple little seat or stool and look at how the bones are put together. Look at how it comes in and there's this curved corner on all of them the way they come together, the way the stretchers are not straight, they actually taper narrower between, and then it tapers down the foot. It's such an elegant, organic looking piece of furniture that otherwise would look very kind of rigid, uh, like your typical, um, you know, turned elements when they're just, when they're just tended into the leg, it, 
it looks like it was hurried. This, like Pug Moore used to say, when we would do something like this, he would say after it was done, looks like it growed together. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, that's what Wharton Eshrix looks like, like it growed together. So I want to just do a quick little exploration into this kind of organic uh, sculptural mortise and tenon. A real simple study. So let's check this out. Let's just do a quick little drawing on the, the way this is structured. Let's just say we have, um, let's have a, a piece coming down like this, and then one coming down like this. And let's say we have that curve, and we want to execute this nice curve into a rail, and then We'll do another one down here, just to show the comparison. We'll come up. Okay, that's the kind of joint we want. So this stretcher is going to tenon into the leg. Now it could be a floating tenon or a true integral tenon, but we want it to join into the leg. Now here's the question. Where are we going to put the joint? So. If we, normally you'd look at this and you'd think, okay, I'm gonna put the joint right across here. Okay, that way I can have this straight and then have this element. This will be just the full dimension. Or do we put the joint across somewhere here? So this stays pretty straight. And this is where we do our sculpt. We do our sculpting in this piece or we're going to do our sculpting at the end of this piece. Well, it has something to do with grain direction. So remember our grain is going this way on our vertical piece and it's going horizontally this way. So if we went with this method here, you're going to end up with what we term short grain because see how short it gets into that curve? and then it's long. So you have the dreaded short grain right here, very short. Now what's the big deal about that? Well, you know from pressure or from just getting dinged or whatever, this can break out. Because it's so short, it's not uncommon for these type of things to break out and then you have a missing piece and it's just not as strong given the grain direction. So how about this one? If we make our joint here, now we have this stretcher is long. We have very little, really no short grain here if that's coming in straight. And then we have this one going up like this. And we have shorter grain here, but it's not enough to be weak. So this is how we want to offset our joint. So you can see now what you have to do you have to create your joinery and then cut this back. So you're cutting into whatever element this is to make that cut. And we, we'll go back quickly and look at that after, but I wanna just show you this. And this is the way we're going to do it. We'll set up for our joinery and then make a shape. All right, so let's get to work. We've gotta just create the joinery and I've got some white walnut is also called butternut. Butternut is called the white walnut because it's in the same family and it has the same grain patterning, but it's much more golden in color. This is kind of some bleh butternut. I wish it was more golden in color. It's a little white, but uh, you know, it'll do for this demo. So we'll use the white walnut for this. Now I'm going to make a little mark um, right here. We'll get a, a mortise in here. And then on the, let's see, I just need to get this about centered. On these, I'll make a center, centerish line, not, not critical if it's too centered. And just to, to get this joinery quickly, I'm going to use the uh, domino but I do need to square up these ends really quick. So I'm gonna just shoot it right here on this board. I hope I don't have this set too full. Okay. 
Okay, that should give me a nice square end. You gotta have, that's your shoulder, so you really wanna make sure that's good and flat. So it's gonna meet really true with this edge. And that looks nice, right? Mm. Nice and tight. Very good. That's what we want, thank you. Thank you, camera lady. <laughs> Can you believe we just spent like 28 days together on the road every day? Yes, it's great actually. And we had a great time. I thought we came back. I missed you today. You miss me? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I could wave from the window. That's <laughs> nice. All right, so this is going to be our joint right here. We'll make it there, but I'm also going to put a tendon on here. And just for kicks, we'll cut it in and see what the short grain looks like. But all right, I'm all set to go. I just need a little spacer block to set under here to make this happen. So I'm just going to hold pressure. Okay, same thing on the ends of these. All right, now let's just fit some loose tenons. So unlike dowels, we're just using the domino. That fits nice. That fits good. And beautiful. All right, so there's our joint right there, okay? Now let's just play around with this end first. Um, and just say, all right, what if we did our curve on the here then we would be sweeping in probably a little more than that and just down I'm just going to do a tiny bit I don't want to mess this whole piece up and then same over here we'd sweep in and down all right let's go over to the bandsaw and check this out So let's check it out. That's that actually doesn't look too bad, right? Yeah. It doesn't, but it's got issues. I don't know. <laughs> See, that's short grain. See how it breaks off? It's very fragile. And doesn't take much to knock it off. And then you have a very unpleasant joint. Mm. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do short grain. We're going to remark this and we're gonna do it the right way. So you bring in the, the horizontal piece. We're going to sweep this in. And now we're going to be sweeping in on our butternut. I've got a 3 8 inch blade there. It, it kind of bogged down a little on that curve. So I gotta, I'm not going to do too much. But let's, hey, let's just come in. Why go straight? Let's just have it go down a little bit and then swerve up. Why not? All right, let's come out of this side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it that organic into there. 
So you can see how you gotta start out heavier with this element. This technically, if you want everything to look the same like the Eshrick, this would be smaller to whatever this dimension ends up being to start. But I can't tell you everything tonight. <laughs> it does make me want to make one of those little Eshrick stands though. Um, we're, we're definitely going to do something here. It's just too nice. All right, and then back out there. Okay. All right, so here we go. We're going to go back to the bandsaw, but instead of the short grain, we're going to have longer grain here. So a stronger house joint right on there. So let's go on back. So now we can bring them together and now we're starting to see that it looks a little nicer. Now we've got that coming down, but we've got to make some adjustments and we're going to do that by, you can, you can go in with a, with a rasp or for me, I'm going to actually use a, um, I'll start out using one of those little sanders, the, the little mini drum sanders that fit in a drill. Now, before we do, I'm going to just temporarily clamp this up. So um, this is really, when you're, when you're doing this kind of work, what you normally do is lay it all out, get all your band sawing done. So you're roughing everything out. You're getting it as roughed out as possible before you glue it up. But you wait until you glue it up before you start to shape and sculpt things together so that the joint ends up disappearing. A lot like I showed you on that Queen Anne arm. So here we would normally we'd do a little more work here. Um, if we had, if, if this was narrower or we could round these edges a little more, if we knew this was going to be a round piece, that would be round going in. But regardless, I'm just not going to bother gluing it up right now, but I'll throw a clamp on it to simulate it being glued up. All right, so let's snug this up. Okay, that's a nice looking joint. Bada nut. All right, so let's set it into the vise. And we'll start out. Let's see what we can do with this little. If you have an oscillating like a spindle sander, that would be ideal here. But I'm going to go a little old school because I'm not quite getting it. And I'm going to start out with the 49 Nicholson rasp. And this is how we would always do the Queen Anne's. You know, where you have to blend the curve like this. Get right in there with the rasp. 
see the grain's just stronger. Now, it's nice if you can go in the direction with the grain on this piece. So I'm gonna come in. It's best to go in this direction here. And that's pretty close. So I would make sure I had that, that joint blended in. Then out here, I could actually spoke shave it a little bit. Spoke shave's a home from the road trip. We had a lot of fun. Okay, and then I do the same on the other side. See, we've sculpted that. That's nice and rounded in there. Now this one's a little bit offset. So let's get it so you can see it. And again, I'm gonna get down a little lower for this. 49. Sometimes we would actually gouge right across these kind of joints just to chisel, you know, you're kind of roughing it out at first, almost like you're, you're creating a sculpture. So it's okay to chisel away the pieces of that marble before you start doing your shaping thing. All right, so that's pretty good right there. Now I could come in after that. I feel a little bit of a bump. I'm just trying to feel a smooth transition. John, and then Tom, we come in after that and I've sand a, a little bit. Here. Okay, hang on one second. All right, what's the question? John's curious if you're eyeballing these to match or how, how are you? Yeah, this is totally, uh, totally eyeballing. I'm just trying to show you. Like you would normally have a, a drawing, but, but it looks pretty good, I would say. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> wow. No, I am eyeballing it. Uh, that's, this is for demonstration purposes only. Please do not try this at home. No, actually, you do want to try yes, this at do. home. Uh, so. Really? Yeah, normally we'd have a full-blown drawing, and you would pre-plan you, how your joint was shaped. You could make a template for this arm. This is just a made-up little joint here. Okay, so once you've got that inside corner blended like that, and now we're going to do, put some lines in to show how we're going to radius it or round over the corner. So first I'll just make a quick center line, just holding my finger against the piece. And this is, again, eyeballing it. So here, I'm going to round this over to make this sculptural, like the Sam Maloof, you know, not all the way, but so I, I'm going to come from nothing. Let's, let's give it a good round over like that. And down um, and have it change shape here. Okay. And then I'll do it on the other side, on the other half. And of course, you more than likely you're going to do it on this side too, but we just need to show one side for this. Okay. So again, I'm using my finger sweeping down as a stop and then nothing fancy, but whatever you'll decide how much you want to radius it over. And if you make a Sam Maloof chair or, or you've made one, you're very familiar with this and you've gotten quite good at shaping, I'm sure. So now we have it in this position. We want to give it, get it held down. So this is kind of an unusual piece. So we'll just make it work. We're going to clamp it to the bench. Assuming it's all glued up. And so sometimes when you're roughing these things out, 
You can come in, like I said, with a chisel and come in and with the bevel down, you can use the chisel as a beautiful carving tool. Now I'm only gonna go about halfway to that line because if I'm rounding over, I'm creating kind of an octagon. So then I'm gonna come this way and I can do the same thing. So you can quickly get rid of a lot of material that way. Come this way. I can see the grain is running out a little bit. And after I've done that, now I can go to the Nicholson again. I'll take the 49 and I'm using the rounded side here to get in this rounded area. Oh, these pattern making rafts are so nice. Okay. You feel like a smooth kind of attack. It's very smooth because the teeth are randomly cut. You don't have that row of hard teeth hitting all at once. That looks pretty good. This just give you an idea what you can do. And then we'll go to the 50, which is a little finer. Beautiful. Okay. Now we're going to take it off and just hit the other side. Just give it a good hold on the bench. Oh, I can't wait to do this on an actual piece of furniture. So fun. So we'll just sculpt in there. This gives you a good chance to use your chisels in a free-handed way, you know. They are sculptural tools too. We're so often using chisels more and for just their kind of disciplined flat edge they have and chopping flat things. But here, if you use it with a bevel down, you can just kind of scoop in there, get this kind of carving going. Now I'll go with the 49 again. Okay, so Would a draw knife work in that space, Tom? A draw knife's a little too big. It could work on a straight, sure, wherever. You know, it's just whatever is most efficient and still gives you the control. So I'm just curious if you considered a round or round with a round over bit to get you started. Uh, you can do that too. You can get in with a round over bit if you're if you have that situation here, I'm changing kind of the, the round over. I'm, I'm going heavy here and then I'm sort of blending it out. But yeah, I've done that many times in similar situations um, with Queen Anne work or chair work. Where it helps you, boy, it saves a lot of time. But a lot of that Maloof work, it's, it's rasp when you get in there because they're not they're not symmetrical, they change. They, and uh, you just gotta, you gotta get in there. But you know, Sam Maloof was known for cutting away as much as possible with the bandsaw first. And he would do these freehand cuts, um, not so much in areas like this, but when he was sculpting the arm and uh, he would always say during his demonstrations, don't do it like I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't do what I do. Um, but you know what, what? He lived to be 83. And what, one of the crazy things, if you take the tour, just note the years that these pieces were made. Because if he was born in 1887 and he built this, this incredible, um, what, what do you call it? Library, Library stairs. stairs. Yeah. yeah. In 
1969. So he was 82 years old. And it was very, a lot of people tried to copy it and it's not easy, it's very sculptural too. But it was very inspiring, you know, to say, wow, you can still be making beautiful work well up into your 80s. So that's my plan. All right, so then I would come in here and card scrape. And, and then we would sand. I'm not going to get into sanding, but I'd use like a little palm sander as much as I could. And, but then when you get into this inner area here, I haven't found a good way. Um, you could use uh, sandpaper around a dowel like and sand some in there, but then it just ends up getting in there with your fingers at the end. I have not found a better way than your fingers <laughs> to get, get that shape. This is a little rougher than regular uh, walnut, but let's take it out and take a quick gander at it. All right, check it out. So there we have this sculptural joint. See how they're coming together now? Without too much trouble, We've got a really cool joint. Now, if we were doing the Wharton stool, I wouldn't have come back out like this. This would have continued straight and this would get rounded. And this would be round as well at the same dimension here. So you, you start out with a heavier leg and this would be rounded up here. So let's say this piece was going to be a Wharton corner post leg, we would if we were going to have our top rail, you'd, you'd cut your curve like that, and then you'd come down straight, right? Then you'd have a stretcher down here, say, have to swing out, and the stretcher is going to be this dimension, so make it a little wider. Whoops. So I'd actually want to be over here a little bit more. Just, just cut right on that line. <laughs> I know that I'm, I'm more to the inside of this line. All right. So then we would have a stretcher here. We'd cut a joint there and we'd have a joint up here and we'd have our seat rail going over. So then you would do the same from this side. I'll just do something really quick here, just to approximate. Okay, so when you do that, then you're left with this material. So on the top, if you looked at it, you'd be, it would be like this, and it would be, cur you try to get a curve on the inside. So this gets taken out, and your rails are going in to the outer point. So let me just show you really quickly on that Wharton picture. Okay, so let's zoom in on that back leg. So look at, this is coming in and you can see it's kind of hollowed on the inside. So a lot of material is taken away. You can see in here that that's got a little hollow in there. This is not dead straight from this point to this point. You can see it kind of curve in and then sort of swoop back out. It's very fluid like real branches on a tree, almost the way they weld and uh, grow together, right in at right angles to each other. So it's a beautiful little joint. It'd be fun to play around with this. You can see the top here, how it's heavier. It's a little clubbier at the joint. And then you have the rail tenant into that post there. Let me show you one I did a little earlier in Walnut. This would have been more of a Maloof thing, but very similar joint, but you can see this could be the arm of a, a chair. <coughs> but I do a lot more sculpting. That's where the time is. But see, this is a loose tenon. And after you've done all the shaping, it looks like, wow, how did you ever cut that joint? But you're doing it all while it's still square. So here's another version that he did. Now this one has splayed legs. So rather than being just straight to the floor and all these are 90 degree joints, that one's simple, 
but this one adds that complexity. So all of these have to have the angle cut. So zooming in, you can see again, the joint is over here. Looks like a little pin there and a pin there. So he was had tenons going in and he was actually pinning them. And see the grain structure in that? That's what makes me think it's an oak or maybe even chestnut, a very old growth chestnut. That would be really beautiful too. That That's actually the color it looks, assuming he didn't stain it, but it's so nice. All right, well, thank you again for being part of our little fun time in the shop. On behalf of the camera lady and me, look forward to seeing you next time.